What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're gonna talk all about plant selection as it pertains to having a successful patio garden. Now I see a lot of mistakes being made and we've made a lot ourselves, And so I wanted to make this video in kind of our ongoing mini series here on the channel about patio gardening because I see a lot of mistakes being made and it hopefully will save you guys a lot of hassle and frustration and uh, as well as just wasted time with picking the wrong plants. Now the first mistake that I see people making is picking plants that are just not reasonable for a patio garden. When you're looking at confined spaces, one of the ones that really sticks out is corn. Now corn seems really cool, but keep in mind that it takes a lot of space. It gets very tall. We're talking six to eight feet tall, and it's just not reasonable for a patio garden because of the wind factor. We talked about that in the last video that when you're up in a patio or a rooftop, there's a lot less things to obstruct the wind. And so just like the wind is ripping across right now, it's gonna keep ripping and corn will be the first thing to topple over. So corn falls over very easily in a home garden in ground setting, let alone on a patio. So don't pick corn. The other type of crop are vining crops. Things like pumpkins, cucumbers, and melons, and stuff like that, they just don't do as good because of the fact that we're in a confined space. And when they vinyl along the ground, they're a lot more prone to baking. When the sun beats down on the, on the patio surface and radiates up, they're a lot more prone to baking and just frying in the sun anyways, as well as the fact that uh, a lot of people just don't have the space to give them. So don't pick things like vining crops as well. They just become very, a big hassle. Now the one exception to that are things like vining pole beans or vining peas. Now those are vining crops, but not the same as a pumpkin or a cucumber or a melon. So don't get those two mixed up. Um, definitely plant things like pole beans, definitely plant things like peas. Those are wonderful. It's just when it comes to uh, those vining crops, they, they can become a real big nuisance and they can take up a lot of space that you just don't have. The second thing you should consider with selecting good varieties are selecting varieties that do better in containers. With stuff like peppers or tomatoes, select varieties that are far more small, dwarf varieties or container varieties. With tomatoes, go with things like a patio friendly variety. There are many patio tomatoes that are hybrids but do very well in containers. You can also pick heirlooms like things that are determinant. Determinant tomatoes, they will get to a determined uh, height and size. They'll have a determined fruit yield, but they're far more manageable in a patio setting than say an indeterminate, which gets very tall, very lanky, and can actually take a lot of maintenance and staking and, and space that you might just not have. So with something like a determinate tomato, this patio tomato here is a cherry tomato that we've gotten many, many tomatoes out of, tons of small cherry tomatoes that taste incredible, really good. So just consider that, that the variety that you choose can have a big benefit um, to your overall success because the smaller the plant, the more easy it is to maintain in a container. The next thing to consider when picking good varieties are picking varieties that are gonna do better in drier, hotter climates. Now, as we talked about in the last video, patio gardens are far more susceptible to heat, drought, wind, things like that. And so by picking varieties that are gonna do better in that environment are gonna do better for you. Things like thyme, mint, uh, this little uh, Pluto basil here and parsley in the back, they do great in Mediterranean climates. They're dry, hot loving plants. With something you know, like, uh, like lettuce, not gonna be the best choice to, uh, to pick because of the, the fact that it gets hot really quick, it gets you know, very dry. If plants get stressed, they go to seed very quickly. And so by picking these Mediterranean plants, they, they naturally are bred to grow in these more arid, harsh environments. And so they're gonna be better off for you in containers on a patio garden. The next thing to consider when picking good varieties for your patio garden are picking varieties that can be planted closely together. This Swiss chard back here, we have about seven or eight plants planted in this small container. Now you might say, well, that's, that seems really crowded. But in a patio garden, it actually not only maximizes the harvest, but also protects the soil. It's a benefit to us because of the fact that, like I said, in a patio, you have a lot more sun, a lot more wind, a lot more uh, environmental conditions that lead to evaporation. Having your soil shaded like they are in this container actually will, will lead you to have uh, less evaporation and less stressed plants, which means your plants are going to do better. So things like carrots are gonna do great because you can densely plant those. Planting things like beets, Swiss chard, even things like lettuce and spinach in the early season can be a big benefit. It's gonna allow you to grow far more food in the small amount of space that you have. 
All right, now the final thing I wanted to talk about with picking good container varieties is that you as a container gardener or as a patio gardener have a benefit and a leg up to us in-ground gardeners when it comes to two different types of plants. The first type of plant is a plant that spreads very easily. We in-ground gardeners would never plant these plants because they would easily overtake our garden. But in containers, they can't go anywhere. And so they make wonderful plants for you as a patio gardener to choose. Things like mint, oregano, or even chives. These plants crawl along the ground or they spread their seeds and they spread everywhere. They become such a nuisance in a home garden or an in-ground garden that we often just don't even pick them to plant and we say, save those for containers. So you as a container gardener have a leg up because those are, those are actually varieties that do very well in containers. Also, the next type of variety are varieties that need to be taken indoors. Less cold hardy varieties like figs, pomegranates, other perennials that might be tender perennials like rosemary. These are varieties that we as in-ground gardeners have to physically dig them up, put them in a container, take them indoors. Whereas you already have a leg up because you can plant them in a container, keep them outside while the weather is warm, and then take them inside as long as you have a sunny window or some artificial light, you can take them inside and they're going to grow and thrive for you. So you don't have to worry about transplant shock because they're already planted. And so those are two varieties of, or two types of plants that make a great container variety because they just do so well in containers and they do so poorly in other conditions. So with that being said, just remember to pick smart varieties, pick shorter varieties that are gonna be uh, less tall and lanky, pick varieties that are not gonna vine and be a mess on your space, that are gonna be uh, able to be planted closer together so you get more production, and also pick varieties that you couldn't plant in ground, things like chives, mint, oregano, uh, you know, sage, plants that spread very easily, or even things that need, uh, you know, that require you to take them in during the winter. So I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you learned something new. As always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home, and we'll catch you all on the next video. All right, bye.